Good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to this uh, webinar that uh, we are very pleased to present the World Insurance Report 2021st. That as every year, and we were waiting for this, it's uh, amazing uh, key findings, key insights about uh, the insurance uh, world. And we would like to, to thank you, of course, this collaboration with uh, Capgemini that, uh, with no surprise, has the, the top level of a report at uh, every year with uh, Elias Ganem and his uh, team and also Seth Rachlin. And uh, today we have also another speaker, Richard Chaffer, that I will introduce them to you uh, shortly now. Um, also, uh, additionally, to thank you, uh, I'm uh, Sylvia from EFMA, and I would like to go through uh, uh, the agenda today. After this welcome, we will uh, I give the word to Elias Ganem that uh, will discover us the key findings of this uh, World Insurance Report that you can download, and uh, in the end, we will give you the details where you will find the whole report. Let me introduce uh, Elias. It's difficult to to make executive summary of his uh, CV. So sorry, I will be very short because everyone knows you. Only let me tell that he is the global head of uh, Capgemini's financial services market intelligence group. He's responsible for Capgemini's global portfolio of financial services, thought leadership in Z initiatives, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Uh, today, Elias. Then uh, we will give the word uh, to Seth Rajlin, also uh, a collaborator uh, with uh, from with EFMA from Capgemini. He is a SVP Field and Market Development at Colonial Life, and his teams set direction and develop uh, programs to help us to grow and acquire more great agents, brokers, clients, and consumers. So bigger uh, and amazing job. And today uh, we are very pleased also to, to have uh, Richard Schaffer, uh, Senior Vice President, Field and Market Development at uh, Colonial. Uh, oh no, I sorry, I missed uh, something. Oh no, I, <laughs> I changed their presentation. So excuse me, I do it again. Richard Schaffer is Senior Vice President, Field and Market Development at Colonia Life, and Seth Rajli is a Chief Innovation Officer for the Insurance uh, Business Unit at Capgemini. So sorry, uh, gentlemen. And then uh, Seth uh, will uh, make a uh, speaking about helping insurance, uh, how to undergo the necessary transformation. And uh, we will give you time for your Q&A that please you can write in the chat. So with no more errors, uh, let's go to the important that it's the presentation of the report. Thank you very much to all the speakers and the audience. Thank you, Sylvia, for hosting us today, and thank you, everybody, for joining us today. So I'm Elias Ganem, and I run the Market Intelligence team. Feel free to follow what we do. You can have here my, my Twitter chat and at Capgemini, uh, insurance at Capgemini as well. So the World Insurance Report is one of our uh, key marquee report that we publish every year. And here we want to show you the last two editions. In 2019, we launched the 12 editions of the insurance report. And at the time, at the beginning of 2019, we came up with a message that at the time was kind of prophetic, surmounting emerging risk with technology. And the emerging risk hit us in 2020, being the COVID. In 2019, we also la uh, launched the second edition of the InsurTech report. And at the time, we talked about the insurance is turning much more broader, turning the marketplace of the future with the InsurTech. Last year, the insurance report was about a specific population, the millennial. We started thinking that there were a specific population. We landed saying that there are a mindset. Everybody is a millennial somewhere and need, we need to adapt to that. And then into the insure tech, we said, be careful to everybody. It's very important to require a new mindset to evolve. 
for you to know every single report and what differentiate our report from everybody on the marketplace is they are heavily voice of the customer we for every uh, report we listen to more than 8000 customers we interview 140 executives we have richard with us today one of them that we got his point of view and we make it sure to cover the entire world and to cover the entire markets here you could see in a very short version the conclusion of the report but we recommend you to go on the world insurance report.com and you can get all the details of these reports on top of the reports and as the reports are full of information we even went beyond that and we created trends books every year between november and january we publish the top trends books in terms of peace uh, pnc insurance life insurance health insurance and then we did plenty of deep dive onto the COVID. all that you could find it on capgemini website so let's jump into this year report and want to make sure that you measure the the lens of the report and want to show you this picture this year we interviewed we surveyed 12,000 customers eight more than 8,000 on personal lines and more than 3,000 on commercial lines we covered it across all the region of the world and we covered across all the policy ownership and here you're going to notice that we have green and purple green is for everything related to personal lines Purple is everything related to commercial lines and keep these two color codes in your mind in the next slides. We also make sure that we cover across all the population being millennial, Gen X and above. Not only we interviewed customers, but we also interviewed in this case more than 250 uh, insurance executives around the world, Americas, Europe, APAC, also coming from the business lines and the commercial lines. But as this year we're talking about distribution, we can miss the point of the most important channel in distribution are the agent and brokers. And here again, we interviewed more than 75 agent and brokers around the world. So be with me. You're going to see at the bottom right the, the icons, green for personal, uh, purple for commercial. The person, when we talk about the people, the building, when we talk about the business side. So with no further ado, let's jump into it. What are our main key findings? The first one, distribution models are challenged. We've been for the last 18 months separated. And so business went on. Some branches remained open, some, some uh, agents remained open, but mostly we all shifted to new way of interaction being digital. So the traditional channels are completely challenged. The only way to be ready for the new battle or to be into the new battle is to enhance the effectiveness of all channels. And the only way to do that is leveraging technology as we are doing it today on this call. And the way forward is the concept of DG intermediation of the insurance, where we're gonna look a lot about it. There is a major risk of being disintermediated. We are seeing remain in the game by become DG intermediated. And to, be, to build on the key messages, the first one when it talks about distribution model are challenged, customers are now reached through multiple channels, insurers have to rethink their customer engagement model. We identified three key words when it comes to the engagement, advice, convenience, and reach. And these are the things that are people looking for, where human, is good in advice. Digital is good for convenience. And the new digital intermediary, i.e. the new channels, the insure tech and so on, are good in reach. But none of the human, the digital, or the new digital intermediary is good across the entire experience. So it's important to digitally retooling all the channels to make it work. When we come to effectiveness, it's really the time to fast track the channel digitization and empowering the human engagement people are asking for our help and we are not able to give them the right help because we are not equipped as human to answer all the questions at the same time the only way to go forward is empowering technology with focusing on ai and data allowing us to personalize the engagement and to bring up the value added services we bring to the customer and the way forward to make that happen is the famous DG intermediation, where agent and brokers remain the key growth channel, 
and it's important to move towards a digital to digital engagement model as well as leverage a broader ecosystem so let's dive into it and see what is behind it first let's take a big picture of what's happening there is a major need for uh, insurance every single person around the world now is asking for more coverage 41 percent of the customers said that they will shop for life insurance just after covid we are coming out of covid if everything goes well around the world and we need to be ready to get back in heavy business and life insurance is something that will come quite a lot but in the meantime there have been major customer dynamic change 70 percent of the customers are demanding a multi-channel experience for policy from the research down to the purchase and 24 by 7 became the only way to go forward so moving there how do we address that we need to have new products and very interesting one out of two insurer is claiming that they want to uh, launch products into new business model and clearly now it's in the mind of everybody working with an ecosystem is here to stay so talking about working with everybody the competition landscape is changing we don't have anymore the traditional company a insurance versus company b insurance we have new players coming to play 50 percent of the customers would buy insurance from big tech and other non-traditional players look at walmart look at tesla and these guys are coming to compete with the insurers into their domain and finally all of the insurers because of the last 18 months of different way of working everybody has a huge pressure on operation efficiency and everybody is asking the customers are asking for much more uh, positive interaction and direct interaction and that's why ai come to play so a very complex landscape where insurers need to adapt to the new distribution landscape and adopt a multi-channel distribution strategy let's look at the adapt and the adopt things we said earlier on that everybody is looking for insurance look at these numbers we interviewed 12,000 customers during the covid and one of the question was we, what is your interest in purchasing life insurance health insurance journal insurance and look at the numbers how they jumped all of them more than 10 uh, percentage points in terms of 32 to 41 for life health and so on and into on the website and in the report we have this information open per country open per age and so on so reach out to us for much more details but also one thing very important we ask the insurance firms before covid and uh, during i mean in the full of covid and uh, on the way out to covid is what are your what's keeping you awake at night and by no sir with no surprise customer acquisition jumped uh, customer touch point is always high very interesting customer retention it jumped from 30 percent to more than 40 percent clearly today we're observing that the insurance company are realizing that the customers has more choice and are starting to shop around and the one that might lose are the traditional insurance firms so with current uncertainty and insecurity consumers are looking to be more and better protected the big questions are we ready to make it happen so to to try to answer this question are the insurance players ready to to uh, to capture this new market we came up with the equation we call it the care equation c for convenience a for advice reach re for reach convenience advice and reach and that's the way that will make insurance come into the game let's start with the convenience convenience is 24 by 7 accessibility quicker response time information availability make it easy to me by the way every digital solution is very convenient every traditional solution not as convenient but where traditional channels are much better than the digital one is on advice. Customer is looking for personalized advice and especially from somebody that they trust and that they know them. And finally, in terms of reach, 
the adoption of a particular channel, this is the multi-channel experience for each segment at each moment is essential. So convenience, advice and reach is the important care approach and we want to see where we are. And the next slide, we're going to look at this care uh, equation across all the channels seen from the side of the consumers as well as the business line. So here we start with the consumers. How do customers perceive the care approach from all distribution channels? These are the channels that you see on the left, digital channels, agent and brokers, direct channels, price comparison website, and the bank assurance. And if you look at the bottom, the adoption, the perceptions, green is high, red is low. Digital channels, they see, consumers see digital channels great for convenience, so-so on the low side for advice and reach. The opposite come for agents and brokers, where convenience is so-so but advice is high and reach is uh, more or less there. Direct channels, not so good. Price comparison, not so good. And definitely bank assurance is the one that is completely missed today. So there is a major opportunity for cross-selling and especially leveraging the data. And recently I met an insurer that said, we are jealous of our bank friends because they know much more about the customer than we do in terms of day-to-day -day life. We know the customers only when he signs and when he has a claim, a banker knows the consumer all over the time. So bank assurance, badly rated, should be a very important channel. So now let's move to deep dive into how do consumer perceive convenience from distribution channels. And here we look at it from the personal lines versus the commercial lines in terms of convenience. And clearly when it comes to convenience on personal lines, digital channel remain the top one. When it comes to commercial line, look at that medium to high in terms of digital agent and direct channel. What is very interesting, 60% of commercial line customers find digital channels convenient to access. And that's very interesting, right? Digital channel. For a commercial line, you would expect more the agent and brokers. Very interesting to see that even commercial lines, digital channel is building up. When we go to agent and brokers, more than 40% of the customers on the personal and commercials said accessing agent and broker at convenience time is a challenge and so on and so forth. So clearly there is an opportunity to improve on all the channels. We, we looked at then, we looked at the advice side and here we looked at the level of advice required for choosing personal line products. We looked at the products we're gonna see right now, auto, home, term and health. And we looked at it from a level of advice needed to make a policy purchase. And we're going to show you here the numbers, which might surprise you, is how consumers think or say and what uh, providers think and say. And very interesting, 28% of the consumers says they require high level of advice to purchase an auto insurance, while only 4% of the insurer believe that customers require a high level of advice for purchase. See the gap, 28 as customers, I want to be advised to buy a, a car insurance versus 4%. 27% when it comes to insurer, 11% when it comes to uh, uh, professionals. 36 of the consumers want a support for the term life insurance versus 22% and so on. Only on health, the numbers join each other. And then you're going to say, of course, there is a difference between the ages. Here we went into going beyond and saying, let's look at the millennial versus the Gen X. And even the millennial are saying that they need support in their actions. They need a different support. They need a different channel to be educated. Then we looked at where do personal lines customers look for advice? And clearly, by far, agent and brokers is the main channel for advice. But look at direct channels it's building up quite nicely as well. We flip now to the commercial side with the same question and the same approach, talking about professional liability, group life, group health, group retirement. And what can we see here? That the numbers are much closer. 
by oh, the population is smaller and the complexity is much higher so it's good to know that uh, commercial customers and insurers are quite aligned when it comes to uh, the right advice we also ask the same question about where commercial lines customer look for advice and look at that by all by no surprise agent and brokers wins but again even for commercial line direct channels come to play so we need to beef up our direct channels to be able to work with these guys so channel usage for researching and purchasing policy the top three channels agent and brokers uh, for research and for purchase digital for both of them much more for research than for purchase and so on when we flip to commercial lines clearly the agent and broker is the big one what is interesting if we look at the right side when it comes to personal lines 38 percent of the millennial prefer purchasing policies from agent and brokers when it comes to commercial line 64 percent of small and medium custom uh, commercial customers use digital channels for research and 36 percent for purchase are we ready to support the new channels to become predominant and are we here to support the agent and brokers or are the agent and broker equipped to do it the right way so let's look at the effectiveness of each channel and what we want to make clear to everybody it's not about investing in one of the three it's not be good in convenience and not in advice and reach it's the combination of the three the confluence of the three that is important to deliver the right strategy so let's take a look and let's deep dive into the agent and brokers when it comes to convenient experience 43 percent of the agent and broker recognize they lag in high responsiveness to customers and are claiming 45 percent of them are claiming that they need support from the insurer in better engaging their customers so we went and we asked them to the agent and brokers and the insurer what are the uh, digital tools that you require 54 percent of the agent and brokers found digital collaboration and engagement suite to assist customers effective in providing customer experience uh, versus 64 percent of the insurer almost 60 percent of the agent consider digital illustration and product comparison tool important and same on the insurance side but very interesting only 41 percent of the agent and broker consider automated data capture and pre-fill tools important while 63 percent of the insurance feel so and the answer behind that of this difference is not that they don't think it is important is they didn't get it and there is a lot of education that needs to be done to the agent and brokers not only in installing the tools but making them adopt the tool to make it work from convenience we move to advice and we're still with the agent and brokers and here we ask the agent and brokers where do they get their lead from 93 percent from existing clients 48 percent from the insurance and in between are the social media but look at the staggering number on the right 61 percent of the agent and brokers are highly challenged to convert leads why is that because they don't able to get on time with the right product at the right customer again we look at the tools and here you will see the numbers also are different between the both sides where 56 percent of the agent and brokers believe that digital crm tools are essential versus 61 percent on the insurer and then when we go below marketing automation tools to create hyper personalized promotion only one of four agent and broker identify that as a great tool while one of two insurers does that again adoption education are at the heart of these challenges moving to reach and here we have similar numbers that are showing the impact between the two sides so if we move to other channels and we move we look at the di direct channels up to 70 percent of the insurers feel that they can interact directly with customers but only 46 percent of the insurers consider the channel to be effective in sales when it comes to digit direct channels and when it comes to the insurer view of effectiveness the 
they are not really convinced that direct channels are the most effective one to make it work. Digital channels. Only 32% of the insurer consider the channel as effective in sales. And again, when we look to retooling digital channel to provide personal advice, the insurer find the digital channel quite low on advice uh, and okay on reach and okay in convenience. Leveraging the tool that we are showing is the way forward to make it work. We continue moving. Bank assurance is by far the one that is the less effective when it comes to engaging with the customer base. And there is a major effort of cross-selling and education to make it the most effective one. So I want to give you a big picture into one slot about all the activity that we have seen. We have identified three types of activity, tools to target the right customers tool to effectively engage with the customer and technique to differentiate and enhance digital capabilities. We look at these tools across convenience, advice and reach and we mapped every single activity. And here just to give you a snapshot, two of them. Self servicing tool for agent is essential for uh, could be improved from a convenience and definitely is the one that will get you the most cost efficiently opportunity. So digital empowerment is vital for providing a better convenience advice and reach equation. So looking forward, what is the way to get out of that is digi intermediation of the insurance. To make that happen two ways. One is empower the agent and brokers by giving them better tools. And the second one is expand into new digital intermediary. Let's deep dive into that. First of all, empowering the agent and brokers. It's essential to move from physical to physical, include digital to digital to end up with this digital to digital. And when we look at the customer preferences mode of engagement, what is interesting to see is video conferencing, email, voice call, are all rising versus in-person visit is on the way down. When it comes to a new digital intermediary, it's essential to engage with new platform, digital insurance distribution platforms, and join ecosystems where the insurers become embedded, the famous embedded insurance, to be able to offer the right experience to the end customer. The way forward is get involved with the new digital intermediary to engage with the customers. Four kinds of new digital intermediary. Aggregators to compare plans from different insurers, policy purchases, education, and here are some names. Exchange or marketplace, join that and be a provider embedded insurance to others. Placement platforms to offer simplified and quick receptions of code from multiple carrier. And finally, of course, the digital managing journal agents where we focus more on specific segments and we give them the product they need. Aggregators, marketplaces, placement platforms, MGAs is the way forward. And why is it the way forward? Because we really want the insurance to become at the heart of the ecosystem and to make it the way that in an embedded manner, we are supporting every single player, being hospitality, healthcare, retail, payment, wealth management, and so on. Some of you are already doing it. We are seeing Chubb very active in the US, and across Europe, we are seeing AXA and ING, two large firms joining forces to offer an embedded experience on the ING platform. So to conclude with what I said at the beginning, it's about understanding that distribution models are challenged. It's about empowering them back through technology. And the way forward is to make it happen by enabling through technology a better interaction with the customer 24 by 7 multi-channel. I try to summarize in 25 minutes the report, invite you to download the report, to look at it, and to ask any question you have. And with that said, rather than only remaining into the report, I'd love to invite Seth and Richard to take it from here and bring it on the ground what is happening today in the insurance field. Seth, the floor is yours.
Yeah, thank you, thank you, Elias, and, and thank you, Richard, for joining us. Um, we have a global audience today, so uh, you know, obviously here in America, we know colonial life well, but maybe we start out and just tell us a little bit about colonial life and, 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 what, you, and what you do there. Thanks, Seth, and, and good morning. Thank you for having me, and, and just well wishes to everybody who's joining us today. It's been, a, it's been a year of a pileup of hard things, and I just hope everybody's navigating it. Well, um, Colonial Life, Seth, is, is, the, is the fastest growing voluntary benefits carrier in the United States. We've been doing this for 80 years and um, almost exclusively in person. And I don't mean just the enrollment events, but the, the recruiting of new agents, uh, finding new employer clients, and then educating and engaging and enrolling their workers. And we'll sit with, uh, in a given year, uh, 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 forget six feet apart, six inches apart uh, historically, about two million workers at the work site and educate them about all their benefits. So you can imagine that the last year, year and a half for us has been a real time of retooling and reinventing and and fin figuring out how to blend together high tech and high touch. And I know, I know we'll get into talking about that in a minute. Well, that's a, that's a great place to start. So obviously people showing up to work and being in a place where you can talk to them, I guess is foundational to your model. So maybe right. what did you do and, and, and how, did you, how did you use some of these methods of virtual engagement like the one that we're talking on today? How did that come to play in, in your business? What, what did you guys do? Well, 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 it's amazing what necessity does to a business, to all of our businesses in terms of accelerating uh, sometimes the adoption of, of tools and techniques that had been available for a long time, but they hadn't been fully adopted. So, you know, this is, as Ilya said so well, uh, workers are more worried than ever before. That's all of us. And we're worried about very specific things. What happens to my family if I die? What if I'm hospitalized? What if my income goes to zero? So worker worries are way up. Um, uh, workers obviously are working more remote. Uh, most of us are working uh, remote. We've got maybe about we have a corporate office here of about 1,400 workers. Uh, we're, we're open, but we maybe have 10, 15% of our workers slowly returning to work. So as you think about being able to uh, uh, historically, again, uh, uh, reach people at the work site, we really had to retool and reinvent it. And what that meant for us was um, taking tools that had been available before, and uh, uh, in a matter of weeks, quite frankly, uh, uh, through a series of webinars, uh, training agents how to use uh, virtual software like what we're experiencing today and how to get that into their lives. We talk at, our, at Colonial Life about being a face-to-face -face benefits education company. And sometimes those faces now are getting delivered virtually, like the experience we're having today. Uh, but but um, a, good, a good byproduct of a really, really tough, terrible time has been the broad adoption of those kind of virtual tools, not only for enrollment, but for uh, educating and, and recruiting new agents, for finding new employer clients, with, for interacting with brokers. And we've got about four or 5,000 agents today who have integrated uh, virtual technologies into their, into their work lives. And it's about having a habit. And the challenge for us, one of the challenges for us as an executive team now, is to make sure that those new ways of working, the, 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 this hybrid, the combination of in-person and virtual that those ways of working persist because there's some activities, frankly, that virtual ways of working, um, uh, forget the pandemic, are, are, are just the right way to reach people. Elias used the word reach. Uh, we, we have a lot of workers in this country uh, working remote. That number will go up. And uh, in the past, um, Seth, we had sort of agent economics that were around like, hmm, I'm going to make a decision here about whether I should drive an hour and a half to onboard a new worker or re-enroll a small employer. And sometimes agent economics got in the way of that reach. Today with the new tools, those barriers of time and distance have many, in many cases have dissipated and gone away. And so we're able to use Elias's word to reach people where they are in a way they want to be interacted with regardless of time and distance. So then good byproduct of a really, really, really tough time are those new, new ways of working, but still for us especially that human element right at the center always of the experience where text not a replacement, never a replacement of the human element, but an enabler, an extension of our reach to do that. Yeah, interesting, just to follow up on that, I'm curious as to whether you found certain agents better at adapting than others. And, and right. if so, what sort of, you know, what, what, what was their secret? Or what's the, what's sort of the divider between those who were able to adapt to the new way of working and those who, who struggled a bit? 
Yeah, it's it's been funny. I, you know, you 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 you've seen that adoption of innovation curve, right? Uh, so you always have folks that are going to try new things just because they happen to be the new things, and then they're sort of your fast followers and et cetera. Um, I it, I tell you what, it's not been correlated to is the age of the agent. Uh, and Elias pointed this out a little bit earlier around worker preferences around how they want to engage. I, I think it's a matter of of leadership. Uh, of those local sales leaders, uh, uh, showing people and teaching people how to do it. Uh, a lot of coaching, a lot of training, a lot of storytelling and case studies. Uh, and just, you know, the, as, what's the saying? The mother of uh, uh, necessity. <laughs> just to get, it just required people uh, in a world where these are contractors of ours, they're not employees. So uh, for them to feed themselves and their families really required them to adopt new ways of working. And of course, there's still pockets of folks where we, we're getting them to adopt and adapt. But um, we've been, by and large, really, really impressed with the level of adoption. Terrible way to get there, but, but very rapid. I, I'd say it probably pushed us five to seven years ahead, if I'm honest, Seth, in, in adoption of tools that we'd had available for quite some time. That's, that's terrific. And, and, and we hear that a lot, that, that in, in some respects, the impact of the pandemic is really the acceleration of the digitization of, of, yeah. of the sales experience, whether it's as, 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 as Elias talked to a, a fully digital sale or whether it's a digitally assisted sale, as you, as you would say. Right. Um, you know, and, and, and I think, you know, in, in the kinds of environments that you compete in, you know, digital is, has become sort of a, a, a playing field, if you will. Right. So sure, sure. compared to your competitors, are your tools sort of leading edge? Or are you are you giving people something that that makes that differentiates them in the market? So I'm curious yeah. maybe you can expand a yeah, little bit your approach to the, the digital tooling of your sales force. I understand you have you have a, a something called agent assist that you're proud of. Maybe you could talk just a little bit about what you guys have done in that space. Yeah, a, agent assist is a is a a homegrown um, a mobile uh, a sales platform for our agents. Uh, and again, like I mentioned, our entire agent force, our revenue producing arm, these are all independent contractors and small business owners. So they're choosing to be a part of our family. Uh, and it's really, really tough out there. Elias was talking about how hard it is for agents or brokers to get meetings, uh, the ratio of the number of, of, of client and you know, new prospect uh, contacts to an actual sale, it's gotten really, really much, much tougher in the environment we're living in. The impact of small businesses has been tough. That, that, that's a preferred segment for us. Many small businesses, unfortunately, in the United States and elsewhere are have shuttered or been physically closed for some time. Thank God it feels like it's reopening again, finally. Um, so, so we went on offense a couple of years ago to provide uh, this agent assist platform. And, and it's, it began uh, as a lead distribution platform serving up preferred leads to agents who could check them out and then within the assist platform could could uh could make and record contacts with prospective clients uh and we were able to push sort of preferred industries and preferred uh buyers or, or uh, employers likely to purchase and value what we provide the adoption of that we've got about three or four thousand agents uh, interacting each day in that and claiming leads and, and now what we're shifting it to, Seth, is, is, is an entire, think of it like a system of record for the employer, for our clients, and the agents are able to use that. They get nudges and reminders, not only for prospective clients, but reminding them at the right time of the year to make contact with existing clients, offer them new products and services, reschedule re-enrollment with their workers. Uh, and we'll continue to put value props on that platform, but uh, it, it's been, a, a, again, it's, it's, a, it's a digital tool that's enabling and extending our reach with the human element. And I think that's been a big, uh, that, that tool and some other training experiences we provide has helped us in our recruiting efforts. Uh, you know, people wanna come to a, a, be a part of a system that's winning, that works. And so we spend a lot of time and investment on the attraction and retention of new agents, which is challenged right now in the economy. And we have more jobs and uh, workers who are interested in, in the United States. Um, and our recruiting efforts are challenged. At the same time, we're seeing our development success go up. So getting better at onboarding and developing new folks and having to find really new ways to reach and refer people into our, into our family. But the, the, the agent assist tool has been uh, something we'll keep expanding and uh, been a big lead gen. What we're seeing it, it enables is an agent to get to um, uh, sort of thriving more quickly 
uh, when they use it. So we're able to say to an agent, this is a winning platform. Your success will be more likely to happen and it'll happen more faster. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, you mentioned, and I, I of course know, but you mentioned that you're in the voluntary benefit space. And so voluntary right. benefits are obviously products where you've got to convince someone that there's a need there and that based on the need there's a protection that they can purchase through their employer but still on a voluntary basis so there's a i i i, I would suspect and, and believe that there's a fair amount of advice in that kind of a sale you know you need to right. talk to the person's situation understand where they're at in their own life course or, or personal journey and then talk to the relevance of that insurance product right and, and i think you know, one of the things we saw, you know, very clearly in the report was that these these digital tools still lack in their ability to provide that kind of advice, right? And so, right. journey with 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 your own your agent assist platform and your own digital engagements. What's the path to making them more human? What's the path to making them more, yeah. almost say, empathetic, so that they can further assist in, in 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 that in that sort of advice equation yeah i love how you, i love how you asked that i was just smiling because um you know we we uh uh like i said we sit with about two billion folks a year and um and Elias said something that really caught my attention in his opening and that's the mismatch sometimes between what an insurer or and i'll add an employer thinks their workers want in terms of human advice and education and what the worker wants. So in, in some studies we've done, we've shown that there's a real mismatch. Many employers say, oh, my people don't really want to talk to people. They want to go online and maybe learn a little bit and kind of be on their own. What workers say of all ages, by the way, is that they actually, we're social creatures, right? And humans in, in the insurance world, it's easy to underrate humans, uh, unfortunately. And workers actually want to speak with someone and get sort of social confirmation and get their questions answered. And so for us, the center of the worker education experience is about a 20 to 30 minute, uh, either in person or virtual education experience where uh, the counselor asks a couple questions to assess the person's, you know, sort of family situation and obligations, their kind of appetite for risk, and maybe a little bit about available savings in the event of something unexpected or unplanned. And then again, within 20 or 30 minutes, are able to help navigate that worker through, um, you know, some decision making they've got to do, not just on colonial benefits, but medical plans and et cetera. Now we wrap that human experience with a lot of technology now. So uh, ahead of that event, um, there's, you know, we're, we're, we're sending digital communications to the worker where they can learn a little bit and understand what the experience will be like. They can watch videos and they can gather information. And then we're asking people, like you might schedule a dinner reservation to go to dinner, to simply schedule the time to meet with the counselor and, and to tell us how you prefer to engage. Do you prefer us to chat with us? Would you like us to call you back? Do you want to turn on your camera right away or schedule it? Or do you want us to come and sit beside you? And we think that that agency, if you will, the sense of agency that we can give workers is really important so they can reach us anytime, anywhere, in, in, in a way they prefer. And often, by the way, we've seen a lot of this, uh, workers are saying, I'd really like to talk to you and include my partner or my spouse. Let's do it in the evening and let's turn on our camera in our kitchen. The kids are running in the background. It's, it's gotten very personal and technology is enabling us to do that. So for us, it's the combination. You guys have been using the word care. Uh, it's the combination of high tech and high touch together. And I, we think that's a harder path. It, it, we think it's probably easier to replace our people with technology, but that's not our way. And we don't think workers actually prefer that anyway. Yeah, that's that's terrific. So, hey, last question, and uh, and there's obviously a risk in this question because no one could have predicted the last year. Yeah. That being said, I'm gonna I'm gonna force you to make some predictions. But tell us, kind of think, where do you think distribution goes in the next five years? Let's yeah. assume return to normal a little bit. Where where are we headed from your perspective, and what are you doing? What are you doing about that? Yeah, I think I think you know for us uh, there are um, a couple of things we're seeking to address, and one of those shifts, and this has really been a time of reminding us, um, you, you know, how impermanent life is, how financially fragile all of us are. So there's been a, a reaffirmation of the role that we play, 
and, and quite frankly, there's a little bit of an indictment of the insurance industry and employers as you think about the 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 the, the number of workers in this country who continue to be unprotected by very basic insurance protections, income protection and life insurance. So shame on all of us because, you know, right or wrong, the workplace in the United States is really the only place to access these coverages. So first I would say good reaffirmation that people need what we provide now more than ever, and we haven't done as good a job as protecting America's workers and their families as we need to. Uh, what we expect to have happen is, is again, the rapid acceleration of digital tools um, to extend the human, the reach of the human element. So we're we're busy at work um, uh, building an always-on worker engagement platform that we'll uh, be delivering directly to uh, primarily smaller employers. That will be, and this will be different. That will be always on. Uh, that won't be just uh, on and available 15 minutes in November because that's the time that the employer decided to do an enrollment event, but that's more relevant all year round for workers, not only as they prepare to enroll, but as they onboard into a new employer, as things happen in their life, they get married, they get divorced, they have babies, et cetera. A single place to go, not only to get insurance protection, but to get live advice and assistance around other sort of health and wealth planning uh, and management. Um, you know, topics and risks that people face. So that, that, that's a big area of investment for us and always on platform that we can use in a proprietary way or that we can deploy to partners where workers can gather, get real advice and assistance real time, enabled by technology, but again, with people at the center of it. Terrific. Well, thank you. Thank you, Richard, for joining us. A great, uh, great commentary. I think very much Thanks, in love a lot of the report findings that we went through. So thanks again for, for sharing your thoughts. I, I, thanks, wanted, I wanted to turn now and talk a little bit, I mean, Richard did a great job of talking about what uh, Colonial Life is doing. I thought I would pivot a bit and talk more broadly about what insurance companies around the world can do in order to react to, to some of the things that we've been talking about both in the report and in the interview you all you all just experienced. So Elias, if you could uh, advance the slide. So, uh, and one more, one more Elias. So uh, Richard, I think, you know, very, very ably talked to the challenge of the unprotected. Uh, protection gap in general is a, is a key key focus of, of what we do at Capgemini in terms of helping insurers address that. And a lot of that is about creating the connections, the connections between the insurer and the customer through whatever intermediaries are in fact relevant to, to the need and relevant to where that customer wants to be and wants to interact. So we talk about this thing called open insurance and open insurance really reflects how the insurer of today or yesterday with relatively few connection points, relatively traditional models for reaching and getting to customers is evolving into a, a node in an ecosystem where there's many different ways that customers are coming to them, both to experience insurance services, but also to purchase and acquire the kinds of protections that, uh, that Richard was talking about. So, we replace, we repeat here the, the ecosystem slide to show the very real fact that everybody and anybody is getting into the insurance business, whether it's banks or auto manufacturers or retailers or payment processors, they all are coming together because protection is a key element of any of these products and services. And protection is obviously what the insurance industry is about. And reaching customers is is the is the is the uh, imperative of today. The challenge, of course, and and any of you who work for for large carriers know, the challenge is uh, is obviously both a mindset, so a mindset of openness, but also a lot on the technology side as well. So if we advance to the next slide. It's re it's really three things, right? It's number one, it's that vision, the governance, the ability to understand how to connect out and how to reimagine the business as a connected business as opposed to as a standalone business. It's a set of technologies, 
around APIs, and I'll talk in a minute about our open insurance platform, but it's about how do I create the technical touch points, the APIs to enable all of those participants to interact with me seamlessly, to be able to plug and play, and in some cases disconnect all of the new business partners that I need to compete in today's environment. And it's all the back end, right? I mean, most of, most insurers do not have the, 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 the core systems, the data frameworks, they're, they're, they're shackled by legacy environments. So it's doing all that you need to do in those contexts to in fact make the, the connection points real and, 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 and impactful. And at Capgemini, we work with insurers across each of these three dimensions helping them to articulate and achieve that vision and governance that they need to succeed in the market, develop the core API services and technology, and revitalize their, their systems infrastructure and their plant and their, their sort of application plant so that it can play with those APIs in a real time and, and seamless way. So next slide. And at the core of that is what we call our open insurance platform. And our open insurance platform is really the, the, the sort of the foundation that a carrier can use to accelerate their journey to the open ecosystem. So it's really about four things. It's about agility, okay? The ability to develop and deploy APIs as quickly and, and, and efficiently as possible based on industry standard models. So we have a, a very active partnership with Accord, and we are helping Accord in the, in the creation and, and um, deployment of next generation RESTful API standards for, for insurance interactions. It's about innovation. So it's about being able to leverage all of the work that's happening across the insure tech community and bring pieces and parts of that into, into the enterprise so as to accelerate the journey to this open platform. It's obviously about the APIs themselves. And so we come to, we, the platform comes with a number of existing insurance out of the box APIs, as well as with blueprints and frameworks that enables them to be created. And then, you know, perhaps most importantly, most importantly, there's a danger in opening up, right? There's a danger from a cybersecurity perspective. So all of the hardening of the environment, the, this platform was built on top of a platform that we built for open banking. So highly secure, highly redundant in its, in it, in its, in it, in its, uh, in its construction with, with, with a strong ability to persistently manage threats on a real time basis and avoid some of the kinds of incidents that unfortunately the world has been plagued with in recent days. Now, beyond the API framework, beyond all of this kind of openness, comes the second element. So, Elias, if you would invent the slide, advance the slide. And that is the digitization of the insurance plant. So, we've coined the term digit intermediation for a reason. And I think Richard very, very well underscored that point that. The, the notion that there's a digital world and an analog world and they are different is, I think, going away. And what we are seeing is humans empowered by technology. So we have a digital agency solution that blends together digital marketing. So how do we acquire leads and move them into the funnel, much the way Richard, Richard talked to? An engagement capability. So how do we empower agents to use those kinds of digital tools to have those meaningful interactions with customers that, that, that Richard talked about. And lastly, the ease of doing business. How do we use the digital tools for those elements where a human not be in the loop, right? So how do we take all those mundane routine interactions, make them seamless, make them straight through, so that the actual face-to-face -face interactions or, or, or intermediated interactions that we have are the meaningful ones and are the impactful ones for, for the customer. So if we go to the next slide. So there's a lot of piece parts to that. And we at CAP, the offer encompasses all of these piece parts. It includes digital marketing from a strategy perspective, an agent experience strategy, compliance, 
omni-channel engagement, so making those service interactions both physical and digital in a kind of real-time ability to hand them off so that they, they don't lose a thread. It's about the next best action and using digital tools to help the agent be a better advisor and a better counselor to, 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 their, to, their, to their customer. That includes personal sales content, the ability, obviously, to quote and bind in real time, and then cross-selling and, and, and managing offers. So that the agent, you know, the agent is in fact elevated by this technology and able to do a to do a better job, and the customer experience and the sales experience benefits as a consequence. So obviously, we at CAP are happy to talk to you more about both the API solution and the agent solution. We're very proud of them. We think they really respond to a lot of the kinds of trends that we talked about today. And with that, I'd love to hand it back to Sylvia uh, for questions from the audience. So thank you all. Yes, coming back, uh, thank you for these uh, explanations. Very, it was very, very clear. And uh, yes, we already have uh, some questions uh, for the audience. First, I think is for Elias. Uh, someone is asking uh, when you talk about the, the data of the report, where is the data from and uh, from uh, which country? So I'm going to ask you to repeat the question. What is from which country? The, that, the data. Oh, the data, the data is coming. You mentioned that yes, has uh, you have built a study on it yeah yeah yeah. It, well it's covered all the key markets it's uh, north america it's europe it's asia it's france it's germany it's uk it's us it's canada it's latin america we really make sure that we cover all the markets to have a very good representation and as we meet with you on a 101 depending on which region you are at, we can narrow the information down to Europe and down to France, to give an example. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And another question, uh, maybe for Seth. Uh, I read it. As the industry is moving towards a virtual mode of engagement, will agents remain as a leading intermediary in insurance distribution? Well, I think so, and I think so for a lot of the reasons that uh, that the report underscores and that and that Richard uh, Richard outlined. I think for the absolute most simple insurance products, where a digital purchase, uh, I think of a warranty product, for example, or I think of a travel insurance product, where it's 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 exceptionally clear what's needed and how it's needed. I think I think it I think it. it a digitization of that is, is, is probably inevitable and it's already happened in many respects. But I think for the kinds of products that are truly impactful to customers' lives that provide them what I'd sort of call the existential protections of life, I think the advice of a human being and, and, and a person who truly understands how these products work and, and, and how they're intended to operate is, is, is irreplaceable. And Cynthia, yes. if you allow me to add to that, I think uh, the, the report have shown, you might have noticed the two slides where we were showing the advice required, perceived as requested by the customer versus perceived by the insurer. And clearly, even an auto insurance or a home insurance, advice is still required. So now it has changed. It's not anymore a face-to-face -face interaction that we might need but advice is really at the heart of the best engagement going forward. Sure, thank you. And last question, because we only have one minute left, uh, I would like to, to know Richard's opinion about millennials, uh, because uh, we have had a uh, question asking, uh, so one is surprised by the finding that millennials require, require more advice in choosing insurance policies. What might be the drivers behind this phenomenon? Maybe, Elias, you can also add to it. I think they've just reminded us how 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 much all of us are social creatures. Uh, uh, you, you think about the social interaction that young people are experiencing today on 
the platforms like Instagram, et cetera. This is just highlighting what Seth and Ilias have been talking about, the human element. We're social creatures. We like confirmation about the decisions we make. We want to interact with people at a very high level, and technology can enable that human interaction. I, I think that's, that, that's the big takeaway from me, that people are very social and they want to engage. Okay, so let me... Only the, the last, last, last question for Elias. Uh, the audience want to know, when looking to develop products for open insurance environments via APIs, what aspects of products like underwriting, rating, are different from convention, conventionally sold products? One minute, Elias, no more. One minute. So in fact, it's, it's turning invisible. In fact, what customers are expecting is to be covered and they need to be covered whatever they are doing i'm going to give you two two examples that are very relevant going into an airbnb i, I want to be sure that even though i am buying for the place i am also covered for the place and if anything happens while i am there i need to be completely covered and that's where an api between the house renters and the insurance makes it automatic the second example is getting on an uber exactly the same things could happen while i am in the car and i need to make sure that i am protected so if i am while i am hailing the ride i am automatically doing three things through apis one is geolocating me second is paying third is being protected these are three providers that through api interaction are embedding their services into an experience being ride hailing or being going with my family to a place so the new insurance is an embedded insurance and said put it very well in all my life i need to be covered and i need my insurance to do it the seamless way possible okay thank you you keep your word and it was only one minute so we are uh, out of time it's really a pity because we could uh, stay here and ask uh, more questions but uh, you can find all the answers to your questions in the whole report that uh, you can uh, download in uh, the page that you have in uh, your screens and also at EFMA website. So thank you very much uh, to these speakers. Thank you uh, to the big team of Capgemini that uh, write again this uh, report. We are looking forward to read the whole one and I hope that we can meet with uh, this nice audience again very soon. So thank you and see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.